Evolution is a tricky thing. Some people wholeheartedly support it, and others try and work hard to disprove it. Within that middle ground, there are those who might have a basic understanding of evolution, but have fallen for many misconceptions around the science. I'm here to clear up some of those misconceptions for you guys as we count down the top 10 evolution misconceptions that most people have. At number 10, humans came from monkeys. For a lot of people, their biggest argument against evolution is, well if we're descended from monkeys, then how come there are still monkeys? Valid point, but too bad it is a misconception. The reason why we still have monkeys is because we didn't necessarily evolve from monkeys at all. Humans and chimpanzees share over 90% of their DNA, but that's because we came from a common ancestor who was neither human nor chimpanzee. In reality, we humans are descended from an ape-like creature who favored tools. The creature that humans evolved from was a completely different species from monkeys. So the next time that you're at the zoo and you see some primates, you can rest assured that they are only a distant cousin and not our ancient precursors to humanity. At number 9, Missing Links Another misconception about evolution that generally a lot of people have is the idea that there are missing links within our own evolution. Basically the idea that a lot of people have run with since we came from apes, which I explained earlier is a misconception in itself, that apes are just a lower more primitive form of life, so there must be some kind of link between said primitive form and humans. But this isn't necessarily true. Evolution isn't like one consecutive unbroken chain of events. Instead, you can imagine it more like a tree with a lot of branches. Yes, life on Earth is theorized to have descended from one common ancestor, however since then, through evolution, more and more branches have been formed. An example of this from human evolution comes from Homo erectus and Homo habilis. When these fossils of early humans were first found, it was originally believed that perhaps Homo habilis was the ancestor to Homo erectus, but it turns out that these two species of human actually coexisted. It's just like how there was once a link between Denisovans, Neanderthals, and Homo sapiens. So instead of evolution being a linear your progression, it's more like diversification. There are no missing links. Now before I carry on debunking some misconceptions about evolution, I would first like to take a moment to ask you guys to consider leaving a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far, and maybe even consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos like this one. At number 8, Purposeful Evolution Another misconception about evolution is that organisms evolve on purpose. Though it may seem as though this is the case, it's a little bit more complex than that. Most people believe that something will evolve in a way to keep up with its changing environment, for example if a species becomes resistant to something over time. This kind of change has been seen by mosquitoes for example. In India in the 1970s, the introduction of the insecticide DDT caused a population of mosquitoes to become increasingly resistant to the chemical over time. Though some people believe that this was caused by the insect's purposeful change or mutation to increase their chances of survival, it is actually a case of biology that was already present in a select few in said environment. Natural selection can only randomly favor the best of what is available. Essentially, in this case, there would have been a small population of mosquitoes in the area who were already resistant to the chemicals thanks to their own genetics. When those who were not resistant to the chemicals started to die off, that non-resistant gene was also taken out of the gene pool and those who were resistant took their place and were therefore able to repopulate and with their mutation in the new gene pool, their resistance was passed down to their young and over time the species evolved to be more resistant to the chemical in their environment. Evolution is mostly circumstantial, not purposeful. At number 7, survival of the fittest. The term survival of the fittest is often associated with evolution to essentially explain the process. For a lot of people, this term can lead to a misunderstanding of the process of evolution because it makes it sound like only the strongest, most powerful species will survive. This isn't exactly true and isn't how evolution really works. It's not a matter of being the most ruthless species winning over the others, it's more about being successful at thriving and reproducing. So in this case, being the fittest doesn't necessarily mean being the strongest. In terms in terms of evolutionary biology, it's all about being able to make more of your own species. So if you were to bring it back to the mosquito example from earlier, in their case the quote unquote fittest were the ones who were already resistant to DDT. So next time you hear the term survival of the fittest, remember that it's not always the strongest who come out on top. Also that term, though believed to have been coined by Charles Darwin, was actually coined by sociologist Herbert Spencer, so there's another misconception for you. At number 6, evolution is perfect. Another misconception that a lot of people have about evolution is the idea that evolution is perfect. 
perfect. Many people think that when an organism evolves, it makes perfect sense and everything just falls into place, but that's not necessarily true. Sometimes through evolution, you end up with things that you don't really need, like how we have appendixes and they act more as a ticking time bomb in our bodies than an actual organ that serves a vital function. Another example of evolution being pretty imperfect comes from giraffes. Though their evolution to have long necks is quite fascinating, their actual physical makeup makes no sense. The giraffe's brain is only about 10 centimeters from their voice box, but one of the nerves that connects the two is actually 13 feet long and it really doesn't need to be. Rather than it have a direct connection when the giraffe wants to vocalize, this unnecessarily long nerve instead travels down the neck, around the aorta, and then back up the neck before reaching its final destination. This is all because giraffes evolved from a creature that originally didn't have a neck, but even though through said evolution the giraffe got its long neck, it also kept that long nerve, showing us that things aren't always perfect in evolution. At number 5, Complex Organs There's a common argument amongst creationists that claims that evolution can't explain complex organs. Take the eye for example. It is a complex organ, but many creationists argue that natural selection couldn't have created an organ that complicated since through evolution a half-developed eye would have served no purpose and would probably have been bred out over time. But Charles Darwin had an explanation for that too, and it's actually been proven. Darwin suggested that perhaps the eye had its origins in organs with different functions. Organs that allowed an organism to detect light would have been something that was passed down and was favored by natural selection. Even if it couldn't provide full vision like we know it, it still would have been helpful for survival and over time, it became the eye. Scientists have proven this theory correct as light sensitive organs have been found in mollusks. At number 4, individuals evolve. Unfortunately, individuals cannot evolve. If that were the case, then I would have evolved wings so that I could get to work without having to deal with traffic. No, instead evolution is a lengthy process that is more of a group effort. Evolution is the change in genetic composition of a population over time, often over many generations. For evolution to occur, genes and traits have to be passed down through offspring, and contrary to some people's beliefs, you can't do that on your own. Though individuals do go through changes over their lifetimes, that is called development, not evolution. At number 3, the origin of life. Though the theory of evolution can shed a lot of information on the past, it can't tell us everything. A common misconception about evolution is that it can tell us the origin of life. As great as that would be, that is unfortunately untrue. Through the theory of evolution, we can learn about the evolution of different organisms, how life diversifies, and the origin of certain species, but it can't shed light on the origins of the first cells, which is how life is defined. To determine the origin of life itself on Earth, something that biologists still struggle with because it occurred such a long time ago, and because the intermediate stages of the organisms that would lead us to the origin of life would have immediately become food, it's pretty hard to study. The early stages of life included the creation of organic molecules such as carbohydrates, amino acids, or nucleotides, and if these were formed by inorganic precursors today, they would just be broken down by other organisms. So unfortunately, through the theory of evolution, you can't get all the answers and you can only go so far back in time. It can tell us a lot, but not everything. At number 2, Controversial Another misconception about the theory of evolution is that it's controversial among scientists. A lot of people believe that because of the argument of creationism versus science, that the theory of evolution would still be a highly debated topic, but really it's actually the most widely accepted theory in the field of science. I mean sure, back in 1859 when the theory was first proposed, there were some skeptics and others that debated this theory, but for the most part it was widely accepted throughout the scientific community, and because it actually helped to explain and prove many other scientific hypotheses, the theory of evolution became pretty popular. It even helped to reject the predominant theory of the origins of species at the time, which dictated that species had been specially created within relatively recent history. It helped to explain specific phenomena that scientists couldn't explain prior to this theory, and helped further advance the field of science as well. And finally at number 1, it's just a theory. By far the biggest misconception about the theory of evolution is that it is just a theory, not fact. While in regular everyday language the word theory means to have an idea, hunch, or guess about something, in science a theory is more than just an idea. In this field of study, scientists come up with a hypothesis which is a prediction of a specific outcome based on evidence, and a theory is a collection of hypotheses. 
Essentially, theories are a collection of all the facts about a certain subject and is a strong framework that can expand to include new hypotheses and new evidence to further the theory and to make it stronger. So with the theory of evolution, it's not just an idea, it's a fact made up of a bunch of other facts to further explain it. As I said before, this theory is one of the most widely accepted in the scientific community, so there's no dismantling it due to the amount of evidence that there is to support it. Now before I wrap things up for today, I want you guys to leave me a comment down below and tell me if you've fallen for any of the misconceptions about evolution that I talked about today. I certainly have, and I learned a lot through my research for this video, so hopefully you guys learned something today as well. Anyways, that's it for me. I've been your host, Room, and until next time, stay safe, make good choices, and stay sweet, bumblebees.